What is up, y'all? OD, aka Big Jake here once again, and welcome to the second edition of Backyard Barbecue Basics. And today I'm gonna teach you guys some great tips and tricks on how to cook on a Weber Smoky Mountain. All right, let's go over the Weber Smoky Mountain itself. I have the 22 and a half inch model. That is the largest model of Weber Smoky Mountain that you can buy. And I bought the largest one because that way here where the top grate fits in, you can fit a large brisket on there, no problem. Uh, I've done a couple of modifications. As you can see, I have changed the door out. That is one thing that I do not like about the Weber Smoky Mountain is the original door is very flimsy and very thin. This is the Cajun Bandit door. So you can buy the Cajun Bandit door and the Cajun Bandit um, charcoal ring for about 94 bucks on the Cajun Bandit website. I would recommend those two mods and I will put a link in the description on how to get the Cajun Bandit mods. Also, if you can see, I put the gasket uh, around the door here. I personally probably wouldn't do that again. Uh, I don't think it helps all that much. I also put the gasket, which you now can't see, around the lip of the body here. And from uh, putting the lid off and on, it's just gotten dirty and messy and nasty. I also put it over here on the bottom of the uh, base. And from taking the middle body off uh, several times, the gasket actually just completely fell off. So I would not recommend uh, putting gaskets on this thing. I don't think it helps to the point where it's actually worth it. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I have the Cajun Bandit charcoal ring in here. It's a little bigger than the Weber Smoky Mountain one and the holes are a little bigger in it so you get a little better airflow for your charcoal. And speaking of charcoal, this is how I set up my Weber Smoky Mountain. Uh, this is the minion method. So I have lump charcoal in here. Basically, any cook that I do that is four-ish hours and lower, uh, I use lump or five-ish hours or longer, I will use briquettes. I think uh, lump burns hotter and quicker, um, and the briquettes will burn a little slower, so you'll get more hours out of the briquettes, but I like the flavor of lump a little better. So yeah, this is the basic setup. Uh, I wanna show you guys, this is about the size of, or a piece of wood that I use is about this size. Uh, and here right now, I have oak and apple because I'm gonna be doing pork and they are hidden underneath or kind of placed underneath the uh, lump charcoal because you want the wood to smolder when you're using the minion method. Now one thing I have not mentioned yet is the water pan. So let's go on inside and I'll show you guys uh, how I get the water pan ready to go for a cook. All right, one trick I wanted to show you guys and this is something that I learned from Louisiana Cajun recipes. Uh, he brought this up on one of his videos years ago. I use lava rocks inside of the water pan. And uh, what this does, number one, is it makes cleanup super easy because if you put water inside of the water pan, then you gotta dump all the greasy water out at the end and it's hot and it's greasy and where do you dump it out and blah, blah, blah. Now, if you're wondering where I got the lava rocks from, I purchased these years ago at Home Depot and these are just the lava rocks that would go inside of a uh, low grade gas grill. I don't know if uh, Home Depot still carries these rocks or not, but I'm sure Amazon, Lowe's, Somebody's got to have them, so you just throw them into your water pan, and uh, I never wash them or do anything with them. And then uh, we're going to foil the water pan as you normally would, but we're going to do it on the bottom, and we're going to foil it on the top. So this is what it looks like once it's uh, all foiled up. I used two pieces of foil on the bottom, two on the top, and then that way when you're done cooking, uh, you just rip all this off and throw it all away, and you don't have nearly as much cleanup as if you had uh, water in the water pan. And the other cool thing about these lava rocks that are in there is once the lava rocks heat up, they actually help maintain temp in your WSM and then you use less charcoals. So once again, shouts out to Louisiana Cajun Recipes uh, for that little tip. All right, y'all, let's get some lump charcoal started so we can get the Weber Smoky Mountain going. So I just use these little Weber lighter cubes, butane torch, put this on the top. That's it. We're gonna get this uh, charcoal started and dump it into Weber Smoky Mountain. All right, y'all, the lump charcoal is burned down about, eh, I'd say three quarters of the way in that chimney. So we're gonna go ahead and dump it into the middle of that coffee can here in the bottom of the WSM and then take the coffee can out. Go ahead and throw that in. Try to set your camera on fire. Pull the coffee can out. By the way, this is just an old coffee can. middle on, put the water pan in with the lava rocks and the foil, the top grate goes in, and of course, put your lid on. 
Make sure all the vents right now are wide open on this thing. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take it up to temperature, and when it gets about 200, we're gonna start closing these bottom vents down to about only a quarter of an, uh, the way open. And you always, always, always keep the top vent open all the time. Okay, we are approaching 200 degrees on the dome temp, so let's start shutting these vents down here on the bottom. Like I said, put them to about a quarter of the way open, all three of them. All right, y'all, it has been about 22 minutes since I uh, put the charcoal in and got everything set up. Uh, once it hit 200, I closed all three bottom vents down to where they're just barely open. You have a small slit of uh, airflow coming through. And as I mentioned, always leave the top vent open. And if you can see here, we are sitting at about 255. I like to be anywhere between straight up and down on this dome temp and over here to what I would believe is 275. If I'm somewhere in that range, I am good. One thing you wanna note though, I have my ThermoWorks smoke set up and I have the uh, thermometer down on the grate with a clip. So it is taking great level temperature. And if you can see on the dome, we are at 255 and on the grate, we are actually at 277. So one thing I have said in my videos when I'm cooking on my Weber Smoky Mountain is it's usually about a 20 to 25 degree difference between the top of the dome and the grate level, which is something to remember. So all the time, almost all the time that I cook on this thing, it is 20 to 25 degrees hotter at the grate than it is the dome. So that's definitely something to take into account when you're setting up your Weber Smoky Mountain. Okay, we are actually one hour in now from when we uh, first lit that chimney full of uh, charcoal and probably about 40 minutes uh, since this thing hit uh, 200 degrees. Now the dome is reading at 275 and right at the grate we're at 299. But never fear, with uh, the Weber Smoky Mountain because you have that basically that deflector in there, the pan with the lava rocks and the foil in there, um, you're not gonna have any direct heat so you won't burn anything. And I think the smoke back there has cleaned up just enough. We got a little bit of uh, smoke coming out, but not much. And I think we're ready to put some meat on. All right, and I figure since I fired this thing up, uh, we might as well cook something, right? So let's throw some ribs on uh, the Weber Smoky Mountain. By the way, you can see uh, right here where I have my probe so I can check great temp. There we go, nice little sizzle. And uh, doing some St. Louis style spare ribs with a Texas style uh, rub on them. If you want the recipe for this, uh, I'll put a link in the description. And let's get the lid back on. All right, people, it is two o'clock now. The ribs just went on. And the way this Weber Smoky Mountain works with all that unlit charcoal in there, and we got that lit charcoal in the middle, we got the vents closed down to about a quarter of the way open. This thing should just rock along by itself for the next two hours that we want these ribs to cook. So in other words, just leave it alone and do not, I repeat, do not open the lid, okay? The more you open the lid, you're gonna extend your cooking time, you're gonna get temp swings. Um, you just don't need to do it, all right? You don't need to look at the barbecue when your friends come over, you don't need to show it to them. Just leave the WSM alone and let it do its thing. All right, we'll come back in two hours. Don't open the lid. All right, y'all, we are two hours in and the dome is reading about 260, which means we're about 280 right at the grate. Let's open these up. Boom, check those out. Got a nice color on them. The fat's rendering off nicely. Let's flip them around. We're just starting to get some pullback here on the bone, but it's not quite where I think they're ready to wrap just yet, because that's gonna be our next step. But what I do wanna do, because our heat source is coming from the bottom, is I wanna flip these over and then I wanna start rendering the fat off of the top. So the top has now been flipped over. I'm gonna let these go for another 30 minutes like this, get some more pullback on these bones and then get some of that fat to render off of the top there and we'll see what they look like and maybe we'll wrap them then. All right, people, we are two hours and 46 minutes into this cook right now. I went an additional 15 minutes. I didn't think 30 minutes was gonna be quite long enough. I don't know if you can see there on the dome tent, but we are sitting at about 240, which means we're probably about 260 uh, on the inside of the cooker at the grate. The temperature has dropped down a little bit uh, as the temperature outside has dropped down. The Weber Smoky Mountain is completely in the shade now. We got a little breeze. So our ambient temperature is a little cooler, which will make the Weber Smoky Mountain drop in temperature a little bit. So I opened up all the vents down below about halfway and uh, the temp's already starting to climb up a little bit. So let's see what the ribs look like. That's what I'm looking for, people. 
See all that fat that's rendered off there? You see we got some pullback here, just a little bit of pullback. These things are now ready to wrap. Got all this fat that's rendered off. You can see it, ooh, these are hot. Check out the color on here. See, we got all this nice fat rendered off here on the top. So yeah, these are ready to go into the foil with a mixture of half barbecue sauce and half water. So I got two sheets of foil here and then I have about half a cup of the half barbecue sauce, half water mixture. Just pick this up here, put a little bit of it under here like this and you throw the rest of it on top. Okay, now we're gonna cook these with the uh, meat side down and we're gonna do this for about 30 to 45 minutes and then we'll come back. All right, three and a half hours in, I would say the average temp was 280 degrees and uh, these finished up wonderfully. And one thing I will mention is once you are done cooking on your Weber Smoky Mountain, close all three vents on the bottom and then whatever charcoal you haven't used will basically put itself out. But make sure you keep that top vent open. Never close the top vent. Look at that nice color. Look at how all the fat has rendered off. Check that out. These are ready to cut up. Um, you can add barbecue sauce to them right now if you want, but for me, these are the way these are gonna get served. One little trick that I do too is I flip these over, that way you can see where the bones are. Let's take this middle one right here. This one's always my favorite. Take a look at that, people. Nice smoke ring. It is very juicy. It looks very tender. The fat just rendered off wonderfully. It's got some nice color to it. Let's take a bite and see how it tastes. Well, that's how I like my ribs right there. You got bite through on the texture. The bone starts to dry out as soon as you bite through it, but it doesn't fall off the bone completely. Still got nice ply to it. Got a nice little uh, pullback on the rib there in the end. This to me is how I like to eat my ribs. All right, y'all, thanks for tuning in. That was my tips and tricks on cooking on the Weber Smoky Mountain. Sorry the video was a little long. I just wanted to put everything in there, all my knowledge that I know as far as how to get the Weber Smoky Mountain to cook the way you want it. And that's how you make some ribs on it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.